So what is architecture? I was thinking about that when, when I got the question and the, um, all the pink objects in the world I like thinking about as architecture. Um, a couple of things come to mind. One is, I think, uh, architecture for me is the spatial settings in which the cultural imagination can be played out. Um, and then I was thinking about a friend of mine, Kevin Robottom, who said that architecture is the circumnavigation of form in all its guises. And I think I, I agree entirely with Kevin. Um, I guess ultimately it, it's the relational, it's a relational structuring of material representational and discursive um, conditions. Um, and it's the hardest, I think it's the hardest question I've probably ever been asked. Um, what is architecture? And a number of uh, first year students, first year graduate students often have that as a question and I usually deflect it or we turn the conversation somewhere else so I'm glad to think about it. But I like thinking about the cultural imagination being projected or articulated through, through architectures, capacities. I was thinking of one other thing. Um, I think it also, for me, architecture is, I think its definitions change quite demonstrably when you think about it culturally or disciplinarily or institutionally or personally. I think there are different subscriptions or ways to characterize architecture given those different situations. So I, I also began to think about in which situation is the quest question framed. Um, but I still like thinking about it as a generous, um, generously structuring the potential for our human capacities, but the cultural imagination at the same time. So that's, that's probably as succinct as I can be. So what can architecture do? Well, I think, I think architecture can do a lot. It can, I think part of what it does really, really well is I think it reframes and can reconstitute things which we take for granted. So it has that, that capacity. I also think it's a form of, it can construct forms of knowledge, obviously, epistemologically uh, constructed uh, bases. Uh, I think one of the interesting things that architecture can do, I think, now is to uh, cross-temporally structure things. So we can, architecture can discuss here, now, maybe, then. I, I'm quite interested in architecture being able to discuss that. But maybe, maybe, maybe most importantly for me, I think architecture is, I, I talk about it as the most interesting discipline in the world with no... I don't mean to be demeaning to other disciplines, but I think it's, there's a way in which it can construct and fabricate relational uh, structure between all kinds of disciplines, which I think is an enormous capacity for architecture in, in terms of what it can touch in, in the history of ideas and contemporary culture and the disciplinary questions that are specific to what we do. Um, I also like very much that architecture can uh, discuss the ineffable, those things which can't be discussed. The Baroque seemed really, really capable of this, the inf infinite and um, uh, calculus, things which, which, which are either abstract or ineffable or can't, there, there aren't other cultural dimensions or cultural forms of production which, which can discuss those things. So architecture is super interesting to me in that regard. Um, I guess I also think that it has, what I like most about it is its emergent capacities that we don't, that it has no fixed uh, capabilities relationally, that, that it has by aggregating relationships and structuring them through spatial or representational disciplinary questions and so on, that, it, that it's never known, it's never a solid ground. So architecture in terms of what it can do is always plastic and emergent and on the run, fugitive, ungraspable. So that's also fascinating. It's sort of the philosophy of all philosophies seem like they can, that architecture can do, can touch those things. So those would be, I don't know, three or four things that occur to me that architecture might do. 
so how would you position yourself within the architectural discourse? Yeah, this is a really interesting question for me because I'm interested in, I'm really interested in how as architects and teachers and students we determine what the scope of a piece of work should be. In other words, what are its responsibilities, what's in the frame or not. And for me, I'm interested in, in neither the autonomous project necessarily nor the sort of situated and phenomenal project, let's say. I'm interested in being dexterous, versatile, and being able to deal with each situation quite differently so that I might be working in a manifesto on one project and be doing a set of, there might be a series of representational tropes. On the other hand, I might be working indexically, phenomenally, and parametrically. And at the same time, I might be working on a piece of work in which I don't know how I'm working or what my position is or how I want to claim territory. So I'm, I've been a bit slippery, I think, for a lot of people because I think I let the, I, I go to the situation in which I'm working and I don't take everything from that, but I certainly try to tailor the approach, the methods, the representational techniques, the styles of thinking, the conceptualization to the situation. So, and I'm, I'm interested in conceptually innovating. So I'm not, I don't, I don't think I fall into camps. I'm interested in each piece of work being radically different. If I, I, they're not, but I wish they were, from the next and the former, because all the questions are always different. And I believe in transformation as a way to both work on constructing one's practice or positions, transformation's critical, as well as working on pieces of work transformationally. So I think plasticity, agility, dexterity, to be able to know when to work at the level of autonomy, when to work at the level of specific situational and historical relationships, structures of reference, to really be tactical and strategical about when to deploy positions and positioning is incredibly important to me. Maybe one other quick thing, I also am interested in not knowing what the position is from day to day. I'm not, I think it's important discursively and rhetorically. I'm not sure that on the ground working on things that I'm so interested in knowing what the positions are so I'm also, I want to evacuate or um, hide from any kind of locative devices that say, well, that's your position or those are your three position. Um, I'm just interested in dexterity and being quite agile in terms of positioning, positions, positioned. Uh, so what is your design method? Um, well, I alluded to it a little bit in the, in the talk tonight. I've identified 14 design methods, um, and one of the reasons I've identified, I don't think I've made any of those up myself, but one of the reasons I've identified those methods is because they do radically different kinds of work. So if I'm interested in working on different kinds of conditions or issues or ideas, I need to be quite agile again with the, with the means by which I work on things. So a design method, if there's a, if there's a method, it probably has to do with um, recognizing what's in the situational structure of something from the history of ideas to the thing, the ideas that I might be working on to my roles as a faculty member to my ambitions as an architect. Those all are part of a situational structure. So the, the method probably always emanates from those kinds of locations, but in terms of design methods, I'm I'm quite I try to be quite agile, uh, moving between you know indexical means of working to narrative constructions to analogical thinking um, to automatic practices, so, and I'm, and I also encourage students to both we both try to look at the design methods, if that's the question is to do with design methods, we try to look at them in terms of their etymologies, what they do well and not well, the roles of the author with respect to design methods, the likely architectural or spatial outcomes in relationship to more ab abstract outcomes. We try to develop a template for operating within a design method or design methods. 
And then I asked the students, we may need to invent or tailor methods actually to work on the specific problems or questions that we're trying to deal with. So if it's a design question method, I'm trying quite promiscuous in terms of where I go and the ways in which I work on things. It keeps me alive as well. It's just more interesting that way. I'm not so interested in working. I have no interest in doing what other people do, really. They do it better than I can ever do it. But I'm also not interested in working on things in the same ways. It just doesn't, it's just not interesting enough for me. Um, so that, that agility and the kind of plasticity and the suppleness um, is increasingly important for me.